Hello and welcome to this short video on acrylic pouring mediums. In this video I'm going to explain why we actually need a pouring medium, show some of the commercial pouring mediums that are available, some of the alternatives to commercial pouring mediums that are available and how we can save some money by making our own. Okay, before we talk about pouring mediums, let's talk about paint. Now, acrylic paint is basically made by adding a pigment, a powdered pigment, to a binder. This binder holds the pigment together and helps it stick to the paper. As you can see, when you pour acrylic paint from a tube, it's actually far too thick to pour. So logically, you can add water. And by adding water, you can make the paint more liquid. Now the trouble with adding water to the acrylic paint is that the binder that binds it together, if you dilute the paint too much, the binder becomes weakened cannot hold all the little pigment particles together and eventually it gets to the point where it is so weak that it cannot hold the pigment together so the paint will actually flake and literally drop off the canvas. It's recommended that you don't actually dilute the acrylic paint more than 50% with water. Now on some paints, it depends on which brand of paint you use, some are relatively fluid and only add, needed a small amount of water added. To these, you probably don't need to use a pouring medium. But on some of these thicker paints, where you would probably need to add two thirds water to one third paint, then obviously the paint would become weaker and the picture probably wouldn't last over a long term. So in this instance, this is where we would use a pouring medium. The pouring medium acts as a binder uh, so the paint will, can go further, uh, but the pouring medium keeps the pigment particles bound together. So by adding a pouring medium to the acrylic paint, you're able to reduce the viscosity of the paint, yet still retain the structural integrity of the paint. So when you add water to that now, you can add water. Okay, that's still probably a little stiff for pouring, but you could add, you need to add a lot less water to the paint now. And the, uh, bind, well, the bond between the particles would be still strong so there's no danger of the painting disintegrating at a later date so as you can see just by adding that um, relatively small amount of acrylic pouring medium to that that little pile of paint it's actually created quite a big volume of paint and then just adding enough water there to make that quite fluid. We've still got an intense pigment and yet the paint bond is still strong enough to survive and last once dry on the canvas. I'm often asked for exact recipes for mixing up paint for fluid pouring. Now, it's actually impossible to give a precise mixing recipe unless you're using exactly the same brand of paint, exactly the same pouring medium, basically everything has to be exactly the same because different manufacturers have different densities of paint, different viscosities, um, different pouring mediums, 
have different viscosities. So it's actually impossible to give it a universal recipe unless you're using exactly the same ingredients. I will show you how I, I mix my paints. I do tend to mix them by eye. Um, I tend to use reuse plastic pots where I can. I'm a bit too stingy to go out and buy them. Um, I use yogurt pots, um, or if you're in the US, yogurt pots. Um, I also rescue drinking cups from the gym. Um, the uh, water cups that people use in the gym, I, I rescue those. But what I typically what I would do was I would pour a little bit of paint in the pot. I would add pouring medium to that. Now, probably at least twice the amount of pouring medium. Then I would give that a stir. I always use good quality paints because in a quality paint there is more pigment, more pigment particles. Although you spend more initially on each tube, you actually use less paint because there is more pigment and that pigment this is very lumpy. I actually, um, as I squirted that in, there was actually some dry paint paint around the nib, which I didn't spot until it dropped into the pot. And in my haste, I now that is still too thick. So we've had one part paint, two parts pouring medium. Now I gradually add some water to that. See the lumps are, are disappearing. Now I would let that stand, give it a good stir, let that stand. For a few minutes. I'll come back to you. I'll let this stand for a few minutes and then come back to you. Okay, I've let this stand for a few minutes. This is the, as you can see, as it drops into the water, sorry, back into the paint, as the droplets drop into the paint, it just forms little peaks that just disappear. Just slightly thicker than single cream, sort of single cream, in between single cream and double cream, if that analogy makes sense. So it's just a little peak that, ought, that immediately disappears. Anyway, I hope you found that helpful. Um, it's a matter of experimenting and finding what works for your brand of paint and what ratio works for for the for the brand of paint the medium that you're using and um, so like I said it's impossible to give an exact mixing recipe uh, unless you are using exactly the same materials okay now let's have a look at some of the commercial pouring mediums that are available if you're in the US the Pouring medium of choice is probably Floetrol, as this is the cheapest, most readily available. Unfortunately, if you're in the UK and Europe, Floetrol is incredibly expensive. In fact, it's actually more expensive than the commercial mediums of Liquitex and, and Pebio. Uh, in UK and Europe, it's sold under the brand name of Oatrol, uh, which is Floetrol. It's a paint conditioner 
which is designed to extend paint and to reduce brush strokes, brush strokes even. Um, I'm not going to swim in it. <laughs> so in the UK, um, Floetrol or Oatrol is an expensive alternative to the actual uh, commercial ones. If you do use this, it's very important to strain it as it does have some lumps and these lumps will dry on the painting, finished painting, leaving bumps. So it's quite important to strain it um, through a fine mesh sieve, very fine sieve, and to remove those lumps. Uh, the, perhaps the uh, biggest selling pouring medium, commercial pouring medium is the Liquitex pouring medium. Um, there's also the Pebio pouring medium, which is actually my favorite if I were to use a shop bought medium. Now there are alternatives to, 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 to these. Uh, you can use standard acrylic mediums. You can use an acrylic flow extender, which is basically acrylic binder. And um, that, that will actually reduce the viscosity of the paint. You can actually use a ready mixed acrylic pouring paints. So they're actually fluid and the right viscosity ready for pouring. In that case, you wouldn't need a pouring medium. You can also buy acrylic binder, clear acrylic binder, which will extend the paint and maintain the integrity of the paint, the strength of the paint, so it will stick to the canvas and not have issues further down the line. You can actually make your own pouring medium using PVA glue. In the US, I think this is called Elmer's glue. Now, there is some argument of uh, the archival qualities of PVA glue uh, and it is thought to yellow over time. Now I've had paintings that I've produced over two, two to three years ago that have been hung on the wall. I haven't had any problems or issues with yellowing. There's a lot of other people that have also used PVA glue as a medium for quite a while and not had any issues. I think it's very important that to cover the painting with a UV varnish because it is the UV light that causes the yellowing. And I think if your painting is predominantly white, has a lot of white, so any yellowing would, would be quite apparent. There's perhaps to use a commercial medium. Other than that, um, if you're using darker colors or less white, I don't, and you UV varnish your paintings, then I don't think there is actually an issue. I'm sure there'll be lots of people commenting <laughs> and disagreeing with me. Um, I think this is the, the, um, the joy of the art world. There are lots of different opinions. Uh, some are right, some are wrong, and probably somewhere in the middle is, is the correct answer. But I'm quite happy to use PVA as a pour, pouring medium. I'll show you how I mix it up with an exact recipe and um, I'll let you decide whether the, this is actually a medium that you can use, that you feel happy to use. And um, take it from there. I buy my PVA glue in a five litre container from a DIY store called Screwfix in the UK. It's widely available. I use a mix of 200 mils of water to 300 mils of PVA glue and stir it very, very well. And then I store it in these milk jugs, um, these empty milk bottles. And I usually mix up, um, well, that's actually a uh, four pint bottle, which lasts me quite a while. Um, if you're on the imperial scale, that's 8 ounces of water to 12 ounces of PVA glue. Okay, so all I do, I've put uh, 200 mils of water in there. As you can see, the PVA glue comes out very thick and gloopy. I just very carefully pour this. 
hope my wife's will not watching because there's no tablecloth on the table. I've got a good top on, I haven't got an apron on. Oh, I'd be in so much trouble. I'm so glad she doesn't watch my videos. <laughs> Okay, whoops, there we go. I love the smell, it's absolutely gorgeous. Okay, now it's actually quite thick and gloopy as you can see. Give it a gentle stir. What I normally do is I've got a bottle, one of these bottles, which I've marked out basically two-fifths and three-fifths so I know where and I just tip the PVA into the water and I give it a good old shake obviously you get hundreds and thousands of little bubbles in that so I usually leave that for a couple of days before for the, bu uh, the um, bubbles to settle out before I use that It's actually a lot easier than stirring it. I'm just for the benefit of the camera, I'm, I'm just I'm just stirring this. As you can see, we've now got a sort of a. It's actually a bit lumpy. It needs a good, really good stir, and uh, that's why I prefer to shake it because it really does mix it in well. I also advise. What I find is that it, after a couple of days, it actually thickens slightly. I mean, that's probably. just about right but I do find it thickens very very slightly it's also worth just like the flow troll giving it us um, running it through a sieve before you mix it in with your paints just to make sure any residual lumps don't don't come come through but as I said if if I shake it in these bottle in the bottle um, leave it to stand for the bubbles to come out I find that most there aren't many lumps at all to be honest uh, There we go, a nice, cheap and easy to make pori medium. Like I said, there are debates about the archival quality of it. I've never had an issue. Um, I've got paintings that are two to three years old that have been on the wall in relatively, in a bright room. So, um, but I do, as I said before, I do, Give them a coat of UV varnish which reduces the amount of UV light that reaches the PVA and the PVA is just one element there is it's a relatively small part of the painting so anyway I'll let you make your own mind up on that uh, certainly while you're in the beginner stage and you're just practicing PVA is a very good alter alternative to say like some of the commercial mediums which I mean this this bottle of PVA here five liters that cost me uh, eight pounds sixty something like that, just under nine pounds anyway uh, whereas one liter of this is twenty pounds so that's a hundred pounds um, for five liters um, that's going to give me well, seven or eight liters worth, so probably 100, 160 pounds worth of versus nine pounds. So, for practicing, it's certainly if you're worried about archival quality, then certainly for practice pieces, this is a really good alternative. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like and subscribe. I'll be doing a lot more um, over the coming months. I've had a bit of a pause where I've got some new equipment, new cameras. And I've also had a little spell in hospital, had an op minor operation. Um, but I'm hoping to get back into, into, into the art. There'll be some of these like, how-to videos. There'll also be some videos showing me working on some of the work that I do. Um, I'll also be looking at other areas of fluid art, such as um, using the Pebio fantasy paints, the, the fantasy moon and um, prism paints, and also um, fluid art with watercolour. Now, okay, 
you don't get cells with watercolour but you can make some fantastic effects and backgrounds for paintings and actually full paintings just using dropping in, in um, fluid watercolour onto, onto damp paper. So anyway, I hope you've, you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you have and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.